And now for something completely different. Rocking the Berg spotlights local musicians. Live in studio performance. Unplugged and completely unfiltered. Rocking the Berg. Live and local. Rocking the Berg with Derek Drown. Here on the K-Zone. 105.3 FM and AM 1280 WPKZ. Hey, welcome to Rockin' the Berg on the K-Zone 105.3 FM AM 1280. I got my buddy Noah. What's going on, Derek? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. What's going um, on? I think we're going to be having a snowstorm a little bit later on. I think we might get snowed in here. Oh, yeah. We might have to have a slumber party or something. I brought my PJs. (laughs) I really did. I've just got some long johns in the back of my car for when I go on random hiking trips. I'm afraid that this is going to turn out to be like deliverance. We can't do this here. (laughs) No banjo solos. Hey, why don't you tell us about your friend Dan, Dan, who's uh, coming in here today. Hello. What's going on, Dan? Hey, Noah. Good to see you. And thank you, you, Derek, for having us. Thanks for being had. Oh, wait. uh, (laughs) uh, No, you you are, you own the studio that Noah has been now recording his stuff in, right? That is true. Yes. What's it called? So we are Lit Honey Productions. Lit Honey. Yeah, Lit Honey Productions. You got to tell me how you came up with that because I, I tried to put, I tried to put uh, honey on fire once before and it didn't work out well. Oh wow. Um, yeah, basically, um, yeah. The name. Where did the name come from? Well, that that started from actually. Uh, basically, I was prepping a show with um, one of my good friends. He's actually my second cousin. And uh, yeah, basically, we were joking while we were rehearsing about this whole idea of. The lit honey, um, sort of basically kind of like sort of an inside joke that, you know, I felt like it just had a ring to it. And I had an artist at the time that was like a side project I was doing that I felt like that sort of branding matched with. And then, yeah, the rest is history. Just, you know, built the SEO and now we're here. So you didn't really have to light any honey on fire, right? No. <laughs> no, I can't say I've, I've ever lit any honey on fire. Man. I, I don't That's think great. they make good candles, but it probably smell good. It tastes great. Yeah. Uh, and you have a, tell us about your studio. Yeah, so we're a full service uh, recording studio based out of Framingham, Mass. Um, and yeah, we've been working with all sorts of artists. We started in around 2018, and since then I've just been, you know, cutting singles, working on music, helping you know upcoming artists in the Massachusetts, New Hampshire, like New England area, kind of you know make a name for themselves and get get started, get heard, you know? Well, Noah showed me the, the, the demo, just the demo track to the song you're working on with him called uh, I Love It When You Cry, and I still don't know why he, he's a, he's an it's, abusive boyfriend. I'm pretty actually, sure that's why he wrote the song. It's I Love The Way You Cry. Oh, okay. It's the sound of it. Yeah. It's and the it's sound about... of it. <laughs> so, yeah. I... I, 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 we've, uh, since the first time I've heard him play, it's amazing, but uh, it's a great piece of music. But when I heard the production that you did on just the rough tracks, yeah. oh, wow, I put yeah. on my seatbelt, and yeah, it was a nice ride. You know, the thing, the things that Dan can do to really add some serious dynamics to your music and just layer in different sounds and pump it up and make it a real track that an audience is going to want to listen to, it's, it's amazing the stuff he can do. It's crazy. What do you say about oh, that, man? Thank wow, you. That, 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 you that's a great me window. Blush over here. <laughs> <laughs> when when that when the compliments come from the people that you're producing and they have in the studio, that's great. And yeah. I'm sure the sound quality is better than, wow, better than a lot of stuff I hear on 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 the major radio stations. So <laughs> you should see this guy when we're in the studio. Together. Every once in a while, he'll he'll come up with an idea and he'll turn around and he'll look at me with this smile like he just discovered God or something. <laughs> <laughs> He really, <laughs> he's very, wow. he's very passionate about what he does. Well, you can see that. I mean, I was sitting here watching him play his Martin guitar earlier, just, just jamming around and fiddling <laughs> yeah. with the strings. Oh, and yeah. I was like, wow. Uh, I do, now you kind of play like he does. Now he doesn't use a pick either. Mm-hmm. You're the only other guitar I, player I know that don't use a pick. I definitely don't think that I play like Dan does. <laughs> I definitely don't think that. I can barely stay on, uh, on tempo with, uh, with a little meter when I play. <laughs> <laughs> Metronome. Metronome. Yeah, that's what it's called. The the little meter. I don't even know what it's called. I I think that's what we're going to call you, though, from now on, the little meter. Oh, boy. (laughs) We just gave him a new nickname. This is awesome. Tremendous. Tremendous. Noah Little Meter Hatton. (laughs) So, uh, well, I want to play one of the songs. You guys were listening to to this song earlier, and this is off your album. You want to tell us where you recorded it, what it's about? Is this this the Mistakes track? The first one that we played. Yeah, Yeah. the first one we were playing. Yeah, so this song, yeah, this song was originally released in 2016, and then I had it remastered um, this past year and re-released. 
yeah, uh, it's it's called Mistakes, and yeah, this is just it's kind of an older one of my tracks, and yeah, it's it's about you know, it's about sort of um, seeing both sides of just like life, and you know, when you basically can take a negative experience and almost use it to inform your path and, and turn into something positive. So well, here it goes. Yeah. to ache, we learn to take as we patter down this road The more we break in our wake The more we speak of the talk That was that was called mistakes, right? Yeah. Uh, it didn't sound like a mistake to me. It sounded really <laughs> sounded really good. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate that. And, how many studio musicians? I was talking yeah. about all the songs being played. The, the, the whoever you had on drums was just. Woo. Yeah, that's Yogev Gabe. Yoda. Uh, Yogev oh. Gabe. Is yep. he from? Where's he from? He's actually from. He's from Israel. Yeah. Israel. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I, I, yeah, and uh, met him at Berkeley in the kind of Berkeley network, and he came down and just nailed that session. You know. Berkeley. Oh, very nice. So you, you, yeah, you, you, I know, I knew that from, uh, you know, our previous interactions, but you went to Berkeley. Do you want to talk a little bit about your time at Berkeley and how it influenced the way you work and wow. your, you know, sort of the way you yeah. interact with your clients and with right. different artists and stuff? Did yeah. you get out of Berkeley before you, it crushed your creativity? <laughs> Yeah, D Derek. Derek loves to say that Berkeley ruins musicians. How do you feel about that, Dan Searle? Wow, um, that's a it's a weighted question. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I, I'm so grateful for Berkeley. Honestly, it's it's just amazing. You know, I, I really just I have a lot of gratitude in my heart for just you know, you know, it really is um, to so many people the greatest music school in the world. Actually, oh, it really and it's is. crazy. It's right in our backyard here in Boston, right? So, um, yeah, Berkeley was really special time for me um it was very um as you would say creatively fertile um oh. it was uh fertile rather uh it, <laughs> it was i was playing a lot of jazz a lot of classical music very much oh, involved nice. with that community and um so that's where you get this sort of ability to like create compositions that you make mm -hmm. more you know is that would you say that's true Definitely true. Yeah, like I was just saying yesterday to, um, you know, uh, on a phone call, I was like, you know, when my first band, I used to write out charts. Like I used to write out a score. Oh, for, wow. like In a band environment. Really? Like wow. a band really environment. Impressive. And it, we would all read the sheet music. And so that was the tricky part is when we play live, it was like, you know, you don't want everybody just staring at the sheet music, but these were kind of intricate arrangements with the time of the band. And uh, yeah, that was what I was doing. It was, yeah, very much so, Noah, yeah. So you know. he knows that I, I like to, you know, Pick on people that went to, to Berkeley. At. Right. But sometimes it becomes more about the theory than the feel. It's a really good point. I know exactly what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the tricky thing about perception with music, right? I mean, basically, you know, when you start learning theory, it's like you're learning all these, uh, all these tools, all these techniques. And then, you know, there's the whole ear approach. You know, Joni Mitchell used to tune her guitar differently for, like, every song, yeah, right? Yeah. And that would put her in this sort of, like, zone where she wasn't maybe thinking as much about the chords, more about these open tunings, right? So, yeah, I think, I think theory can help, but I think there is, like, you know, a space to be held for that as an artist. Like, you have to ask yourself, all right, like, what's, what's this song? Like, where, where's the inspiration coming from? Like, how, how am I putting it together, you know? Yeah, man. This so, you, oh, good. Sorry. So, you uh, going to Berkeley? Obviously, you had to interact with a lot of different musicians, a lot of different styles uh, of music, and you you were forced to be in musical environments where you had to adapt yourself, right? Yeah. So, so um, you are a producer, and you are making all kinds of different music. What I mean, how helpful was all that experience with different styles at Berkeley? And you know, what are some of the specific little weird things that you picked up along the way that help you produce wow that. definitely great question noah um yeah i mean basically like you said different styles so true i think that's to just kind of bring it to the modern day that's one thing with berkeley they just made the laptop a principal instrument there right? <laughs> you know so like literally that's that wasn't the case when i was there so it's an ever-evolving thing um mm. uh school and basically yeah to answer your question yeah a lot of different ensembles I, you know you go from you know being in whatever environment you are in high school etc to just being at, at a berkeley you're surrounded by all these artists and musicians who have cultivated their craft mm -hmm. in their own regard and have their own thing um 
And yeah, I mean, how it informed my producing? Oh, tremendously. I mean, working on just even really like, we were talking about the metronome earlier, yeah, like yeah. really <laughs> really getting down with, with time and rhythm, very useful for producing artists. Um, songwriting, just that that was always there for me and is very useful in sessions with artists because you know every artist is different every artist has a different um you know you're always very prepared no when you come you know you always have a song yeah you got the song like you, oh. ha- you have a song you've composed with a with chords and a melody you know a lot of times i'm helping artists write songs so mm. to just be able to speak that language is very um sort of a berkeley thing you know they love you know you want to cross pollinate when you're at berkeley you want to uh you want to try try new things, work with different teachers for the sake of just getting different perspectives. So speaking uh, without, you know, like making in that natural accent that I have. <laughs> but singing, like singing without an accent, that's not something you did on purpose, right? It just happened. Right? Yeah, it that's, just happened. That's, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. You gotta tell us more about how you how you guys uh, you have future projects that you're working on. For sure, yeah, um, yeah, we're gearing up for a lot of new music this year on Lit Honey Productions. That's the that's the label. Um, Victoria is going to be dropping a new single. Um, she's got a track with a, a rapper based out of California, Tusky, um, doing a track called "Out of My Bed," which is coming out. Um, it's going to be one of the next ones. Um, she's working on EP right now. Um, I've got a ton of new music coming out this year. Um, some different tracks um, that I've been waiting to release for a while. Um, so yeah, I've sing- singles this year. We're liking the singles, um, and we got a few EPs here and there. Uh, artists we're working with as well. Uh, Tyler Hustle, he's dropping his uh, one of his big EP projects this year. We're doing the main production and music for that as well. So lots of stuff. You got your you know. fingers in a lot of jars. I like it. I like it. Keeps you busy. Yeah, keeps keeps uh, keeps us busy. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's great to, to definitely work with different artists to just refine the process, man. Like we were just talking about with the audio and, yeah. you know, well, you know, New England is such a hotbed for music. It always has been, you know, be it the Jay Giles band, be it, uh, Aerosmith. They're just, it, it's always a hotbed of music. It's a great place to watch music and to hear it. That you find that it's, that there's uh, if people listen to your stuff. They go, yeah, that's a Boston guy. I love it, or even or even Vermont or New Hampshire, like just yeah. seeing people, you know, no. know his, I'm from know Vermont. His, I'm from. <laughs> he just. I thought it, I thought it was flash and a gang you, sign there, but no, it's he's oh, from no, Vermont. No. It was a limb of a tree. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was a, well, no, I was drawing a maple leaf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of great musicians, you know, and and they and they shine no matter where they are, and that's the cool thing about it. it like we were saying earlier. I don't yeah. want to put you on the spot now, but you have your guitar out here, this beautiful Martin guitar. Yeah. You want to play a song live for us? Yeah, I'll play. I'll play a song. Um, this is uh, a track that actually was a winner in the John Lennon songwriting contest. R- wow. Tell so. me about that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. He's talking Beatles. <laughs> yeah, so this is a contest that's uh, run by the, the John Lennon um, songwriting people. And yeah, basically there was like a panel of like Red Hot Chili Peppers, George Clinton, a uh, band called Lone Bella, all these people. And the, one of the, this song stood out uh, out of thousands in the pop category. And so I'll, I always like to play this one. Um, it's on Spotify. I have um, to point this out. How weird is it that the name George Clinton has come up twice in this in this conversation? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is I actually saw, ran into him at Berkeley. Really? In the, yeah, and it was a back hallway. And uh, he probably doesn't remember this, but basically he's just chilling. I think he was getting ready to perform at the BPC, and I'm walk- I'm just getting some water at the water fountain. You know, this is years ago, and I look. It's like it's like out of dream. I, I, it's just one hallway, the back hallway there in the old MP in Berkeley, and it's George Clinton walking down the hall with a cane, and he's right there. I'm like, that's fun- funny. That's George Clinton. That's funny. Oh man, that's great. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. So this one's called Hope. I was a blind man who could only see I get the chance from the heart of the sea Don't blame me for falling back in love If I was a joker, would you riddle me sick And send me to a dark abyss Put a hidden key right in front of my face See, I've got hope, it's a melody As I see trash on the pavement I feel the rhythm of a dove's beating wings 
see I've got hope It's a remedy As I see trash on the pavement I feel the rhythm of a dove's beating wings And I sing it And I sing it Maybe I'll climb a mountain today Still the pain would be the same See a view just distracts a bleeding heart Maybe I've been alone too long Singing the same old desperate songs To just have to write some for God And I've got hope, it's a melody As I see trash on the pavement I feel the rhythm of a dove's beating wings yeah, I've got hope, it's a remedy As I see trash on the pavement I feel the rhythm of a dove's beating wings And I sing, yeah And I sing, yeah Some stay cruel, choose to be blind In a world drenched in lies Still, love is kind it's always time to break the ice Freedom from that coldest vice After all, we are one nation of love And I've got hope, it's a melody As I see trash on the pavement I feel the rhythm of a dove's beating wings Yeah, I've got hope, it's a remedy As I see trash on the pavement I feel the rhythm of a dove beating wings and I sing, yeah And I sing, yeah Maybe I'll climb a mountain today Still the pain would be the same See if you just distracts a bleeding heart Yeah, this view just distracts a bleeding heart Wow, <laughs> man, that was, that was awesome Thank you. I have thank no you. idea how you can sing and play that. I mean, your hands are all over the place. You sang <laughs> that. <man>. Wow. <laughs> thank you, Derek. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. That was great. Hey, how long ago did you write that? Is this a newer song that we can expect to yeah. hear in something? Here? Yeah, this one. This one I released um, last year, finally. Um, for the John Lennon songwriting contest. I wrote it for the John Lennon songwriting contest. Yeah, I was thinking kind of in the in the vein of like Imagine. I was kind of thinking about that. I was like, let me write this about hope. Um, and yeah, you know, they chose it, you know, and, and, it, and it was a nice, like, you know, tap on the you know shoulder. We were just talking about kind of competitions the other day and kind of like the musician grind of that. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like it's kind of, uh, it's a cool wave. You know, we just met an artist we're working with. He's worked with T-Pain. He won a guitar center competition, you know, so it's, it, it's cool. But yeah, this song I wrote it. Yeah. That was, that was back in uh, 2018. Yeah, I wrote it. Yeah. Playing the way that you play with your fingers all over the neck like that, I mean, keeping a rhythm and being able to sing, that's not an easy task. You must be able to chop onions like nobody's business. Uh. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with him. <laughs> Quick hands, Derek. Quick hands. Quick hands. Yeah, you got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, I literally was cooking the other day, and I cut my finger chopping onions. Like, that's the first time it's happened in years. Oh, oh no. that's why you said I that. Like, okay. I was like, what? <laughs> and it was like, boom. And yeah, it was it was fine. It was it, it was it was just just deep enough. But uh, so you're playing with a wound <laughs> on your you. hand too. <laughs> it's healed now. It's oh. finally healed. Yeah. <laughs> Brenda, I, a friend of mine asked me uh, about six or eight months ago. He he had a gig plan out, and uh, he had the same. He cut his hand on something, and he super glued it. And oh, now yeah. he was going to go play, and he needed to get the super glue off, and he didn't know what to use. Uh, you know, nail polish or acetone. But. Yeah. Did he use his teeth or? No, no. Yeah, he ended up using the the, uh, oh, the nail yeah. polish. Yeah, he okay. probably would have used his teeth because he can't play like this. Yeah, yeah. At least not the guitar. So, um, I love the sound that you guys have. And the, and the first, can you guys go do a song together with us? Yeah, yeah. Let me get this sure. in tune. Yeah. Well, why don't we take a break while you're getting that in tune, and then when we come back, you guys go right into the tune. Play it. Yen. Yen. Right. You're live. Let's do it. I look into your eyes and I see the hope. 
Don't wanna change your mind, so baby, hold on. Just take my hand and say nothing is wrong. All I need is the power of love. So if you love me, just call me and tell me what you want. You took this feeling for something, so baby, please don't go. If you love me, just call me and tell me what you want. Took this feeling for something, so baby, 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 I please don't go. Just give me power of love, yeah. Baby, if you wanna try me better inside. I never thought that you can be mine. So all I need is your love in my mind. So if you love me, just call me and tell me what you want. You took this feeling for something, so baby, please don't go. If you love me, just call me and tell me what you want. And if it took this feeling. I could sit here and listen to her sing all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and look at yeah. Voice of an angel. Thank you. <laughs> and you're being accompanied by another angel. I mean, that what you're doing, it's fun sitting here watching him do that. Yeah. And I, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. I can even see his beard hairs moving to the music. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Melody just falls right through this guy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. No, I appreciate you having us. And... Yeah, that one's called Power of Love, acoustic, more of acoustic version for you guys, just for you guys. So You know what's cool is that you didn't know we were going to ask for that, and you just came out and, and reeled through it anyway, and, and that's awesome. <laughs> Ready to go at the drop of a pin, you know? Oh, yeah. Drop of the hat. Is it a hat? Got to keep the old acoustic in the trunk in case, you know, in case you need to pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's the good, I love that Martin sound too that you have on the guitar. Mm. But you, it's not just a matter of, it's not just the plane, it's the pilot. You know, you male had, you, I mean, if I had that same guitar, it would sound like me playing a guitar. You put it in their hands and you've got, you're doing something that, that I can't do. I don't know, I don't even know how you write something like it with it, just banging around like that. It's awesome. Thanks, man. It's a Appreciate very, it. very particular skill, and you're very good at it. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's fun. No, it's so true. It's so true. Like even a skilled guitar player can make m any guitar pretty much sound sound good. You know, yeah. if they know what they're doing, for sure. Well, it, well, I think it has to do with just you. I, I, you had mentioned Nuno before, and I'd heard it. He, he when Eddie Van Halen had passed away, he said how he'd met him before, and he used Eddie Van Halen's rig, but he still sounded like Nuno Battencourt. Right. And it's because it's not it's not the plane; it's the pilot. It's the person flying that plane.